guys and welcome back to the UAE family series with Tanya. It's the um, series that I started last episode. If you missed it, you can go watch it. And um, for today, we're in one of my favorite families. Um, it's a woman who has overcome a lot and she has inspired me throughout my entire life. And I can't wait for you guys to hear her story. Um, yeah, so I can't wait for you guys to see. Hi, my name is Melissa Tachi from Jeremy Kenya and I'm doing the UAE Family Series with Ms. Tanya. Hi, okay, so I think it's better if we give like a little introduction. So tell us, what's your name, what do you do? Hmm. My name is Millicent Achien Odera yeah. Mikeni, so married to a Mikeni. Yeah. Um, from Kenya, of course. Um, mm -hmm. I'm a mother of two, mm -hmm. boy and a girl, mm -hmm. and a wife to one husband in this lifetime and the next. Ephesus of one. Yeah. So that's mm -hmm. uh, basically that's me yeah. and. Um, Work. I'm a senior secretary mm. in the retail department mm. at Dubai GTP. Mm. I don't think many people have um, mm. knowledge in the whole duty free. So, could you just tell us a bit more about your work and how, like, your day to day things and you do at work? Mm. Yeah. So, I'm in the retail, meaning in the operations department. Mm -hmm. So, my my work. It's a lot. <laughs> it's a lot around mm -hmm. my head around. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I wonder how I make it through the day. Mm -hmm. But so generally, my work is um, like the PA mm -hmm. of the senior vice president for the retail in the IT3. Mm -hmm. We also have some, we have a lot of other things that we are involved in, like there are races that we are involved in. Mm -hmm. We have the tennis championships that we are involved in. Mm -hmm. It's not only so. These are the things so that like so many different yes, events. Yes, yeah. we have events, a lot of mm -hmm. events that Dubai Duty Free is involved in. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so you said that you manage in the retail. Mm -hmm. So what is that all about? Like how is the like work work structure there? How is that involved? Like what do you do? What of? Oh. Oh, so now coming down to what <laughs> yeah yeah that was what Dubai did you do that mm. so um my boss is Mr. Michael Schmidt. Mm -hmm. He's the senior vice president for retail mm -hmm. in Dubai Duty Free. So I report directly to him. Yeah, I basically manage his calendar mm -hmm. and also I manage uh like um his travel and things related to I offer support for. Mm -hmm. uh, the retail department. Mm -hmm. so, so in case, and I last between the retail department mm -hmm. and our uh, like head office. Mm -hmm. So anything that the head office may be mm -hmm. want to know about the airport or they want to know uh, who is in charge of what, mm -hmm. so they kind of go through our office. Yeah. So that's basically what we do on a day to day mm -hmm. basis. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's it's. It's a lot. And apart from that also, my job entails, um, like most of the purchases that are made mm -hmm. for retail department, mm -hmm. I'm the one who creates the purchase orders. Mm -hmm. So that is also another big, it's like um, purchasing department, yeah, things like yeah. retail department. So making sure yeah. like the whole transition goes smoothly. Yes, and then, yes. So it's more of a behind the scenes type of yeah, thing. Yeah, I love it. <laughs> So you don't deal with all those people because mm -hmm. you know I think some people also think um, like you said the whole divided degree it's like mainly talking with the customer mainly this and this so it's you do mainly like at the behind yeah. scenes making really sure yeah we have back office so mm -hmm. what the people you see is duty free the ones that are the retail the yeah. sales staff mm -hmm. but we have a whole different department that supports the sales staff mm -hmm. so from retail in retail itself we have retail sales mm -hmm. which are the front office people, yeah. the front liners, mm. then we have the retail support. Now mm. that is where I come in. Mm. So we are the ones who support the front liners. Mm. So we have all the different departments inside mm. the retail department. Mm. So we have like cyber finance, those are involved. What you see in Dubai GTV, we have 
there's finance surprise. Yeah. There's a like millennial millionaire yeah. tickets where people yeah. kind of win yeah. million dollars, mm. the main car. They have to take yeah. So, yeah. yeah. So cyber finance are in charge of that. Mm-hmm. We have merchandising. Mm-hmm. So merchandising is involved in all the um to ensure that we have merchandise mm-hmm. enough products for our customers to be able to when they come into the shop, they find the shelves are well stocked, mm-hmm. we have enough product. We are not running short of products. Everything is like a bus, you have yes. to start. Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. We have display department. Mm-hmm. So display department also make sure that the price tags mm-hmm. are in place. Mm-hmm. When we have campaigns, mm-hmm. we always have those campaigns. We have uh, the brandings yeah. are in place. Mm-hmm. I think every time you, you visit Dubai to buy free you don't find it the same way. Yeah, yeah. Give it six months, you always find something different happening. Yeah. We have events that are running, campaigns mm-hmm. that are running. Like when you have Christmas, mm-hmm. all displays are mm-hmm. out of this world. Mm-hmm. Really. So mm-hmm. this is display who are, who are in charge of this yeah. in conjunction with the marketing department. Mm-hmm. So like you said, there are all these different departments. Were you always like in the retail? Did you go through like a hierarchy or did you... <laughs> So what's the story behind you being in retail? Actually, uh, in Dubai GG3, yeah. most of the entry level yeah. is either you come in as a sales staff mm-hmm. or you come in as a store assistant, those who are in charge of the logistics assistance, mm-hmm. those who are in the back uh, in the backups. Mm-hmm. So ensuring that when we have deliveries, they are the ones who are receiving deliveries, arranging mm-hmm. deliveries. Mm-hmm. So those are the two um, entry levels. I worked as a sales staff for about eight months. Yeah. Then I decided no. <laughs> so, yeah, there was an opening for a secretary. Yeah. So I started as a ship secretary. A ship secretary is basically one who um, assists the duty manager. Mm-hmm. And you sort of are in charge of uh, reading the emails that the manager has been sent, mm-hmm. prioritizing which is important, which is not, which is urgent, which mm-hmm. is. Uh, important but not urgent mm-hmm. basically that's it and informing the manager to act on it depending on the urgency yeah so i worked uh, as a chief secretary from 2012 mm-hmm. until 2016. Mm-hmm. so um around 2016 there was an opening for this position mm-hmm. that i'm on mm-hmm. yeah for secretary back then it was just secretary operations mm-hmm. so i applied we were two that were shortlisted, a Chinese and myself. Mm-hmm. So the Chinese got, mm-hmm. but she ended up as an admin. In, in the office that I'm, I work in, we are two. Mm-hmm. There's the admin assistant mm-hmm. and then there's the secretary. Mm-hmm. So she went in and she was working as an admin assistant. Mm-hmm. She stayed there for about a year. Mm-hmm. Me, uh, what I used to do is I would cover. Mm-hmm. Anytime they're on leave, mm-hmm. I would cover. Mm-hmm. I would go there and just do cover up. Mm-hmm. So, this time I'm learning. Yeah, how you're that getting job used is. to the I'm whole learning yeah. the mm-hmm. system that mm-hmm. I mean. Mm-hmm. So I I just learned every time I'm covering, I'm learning, every time I'm covering. So within a year she resigned. Mm-hmm. Then the manager back then, that before it was vice president for operation, mm-hmm. he approached me and told me, um, since last time you applied, mm-hmm. you had been shortlisted in the would you mind if you just come mm-hmm. and sit on it? Because you're the instead of us Doing, doing the a whole, whole new, process, yeah, yeah. And training, yeah, and training. So, much time. so I said, yeah. no problem. Yeah. So I came in. Mm-hmm. I sat, I worked there for twenty for one year. Mm-hmm. Twenty seventeen, the secretary back then resigned. Mm-hmm. Then the then that time it was still the same manager. Yeah. He asked me, uh, maybe would you mind if you just take this position mm-hmm. because that is actually what you had applied yeah. for yeah. back then, but mm-hmm. you didn't get it. So mm-hmm. if you will it, mm-hmm. because it's it's a really big. Um, it's a big, big task. Mm. They have to ask you mm. if you're willing or not. Mm. I said, no, like, are, you, are you sure? <laughs> are you sure? <laughs> because I used to see her, yeah. the secretary back yeah. and I'm looking at her thinking, <laughs> will I be able to do that? <laughs> uh, <laughs> because it's a lot. Yeah. She used to extend. She would not go home on time. Mm. Sometimes she has a lot of patches or that she has to create. So I'm thinking, maybe. <laughs> Maybe, maybe, not, I should, maybe, maybe I should just sit where I am yeah, or yeah. go back to where mm-hmm. I took it as a challenge. I said, no problem. So since 2017 until now, mm-hmm. yeah, I am. So is there something that you, you like to do, taking up the challenges, you know, going out of the, outside of your comfort zone? It, it Actually, even working as a chief secretary was a challenge. Mm-hmm. They said, no, 
Mm-hmm. I remember when I went for the for my interview, mm-hmm. I asked uh, one uh, HR assistant, the one who mm-hmm. was doing our contract signing, mm-hmm. ask him because I wasn't. I'm not good with money, handling money, and mm-hmm. I love to handle customers. I love to talk to people, mm-hmm. but it's not one of things that I do freely yeah. or willingly, or yeah. it's not something that comes out naturally mm-hmm. for me. Mm-hmm. So I prefer to deal with. More As behind the behind, work, you know. I like it when things happen and you see that's me who mm-hmm. did. Yeah. I don't have to get it's a worried tell because yeah. of you know <laughs> this was my yeah. effort, you know. Yeah. I get a lot of satisfaction in that. Yeah. So the first time when I went for the interview, I just asked this guy, mm-hmm. How easy is it for someone to grow? Mm-hmm. He said, Impossible. Mm-hmm. You cannot <laughs> so, you know, <okay. laughs> we'll see. We'll see. Eight months uh-huh. down the line, I was in the chief secretary position. He mm-hmm. came and said, Oh, Melissa, nice to see you. <laughs> yeah. The impossible, <laughs> huh? <laughs> and some of this, I say it's God also because yeah. um, there are challenges that come with every position that mm-hmm. you get. Mm-hmm. Sometimes you look at other people, you feel like, ah, this guy, it's easy for them. Mm-hmm. But there are challenges. Mm-hmm. But And then if you believe in God also, mm-hmm. there are times when you feel like, I can't do this. Yeah. But then there's that strength that comes from him and tells you, you can mm-hmm. actually do it. Mm-hmm. If you just give that extra effort, yeah. you will be able to do it. So that's basically everything is a challenge. Mm-hmm. And I like taking up challenges. Mm-hmm. It's just that I'm getting a little bit older. <laughs> <laughs> the old age. <laughs> but mm-hmm. challenges, especially when t- someone tells you, you mm-hmm. can't do it. Yeah. 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 That's, that that turns something. I was like, okay. I'm time. Time. switch on and I'm like, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Time to prove. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So you said that you're handling someone else's schedule, which is a lot, you know, and you're also handling, you know, retail work as well. This is like so many things into one, you know. So how are you able to manage that mentally and being able to be in the presence and be like, okay, I need to do this, I need to do that, I need to practice this. So how, how are you able to do all that? <laughs> I also ask myself this question. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes I ask myself, how am I able to? Though there are days when you feel overwhelmed. Yeah. Those there are days like that when you feel it's too much. Mm-hmm. You feel like okay, your daughter is asking. I I always tell her, mm-hmm. if I had I kept one day, mm-hmm. every time you call me mom, mm-hmm. I would be a very rich woman. Mm-hmm. <laughs> very rich. Mm-hmm. Because there's still it's it's hard. Mm-hmm. I don't know how I can put it into us that. And sometimes I think it's the upbringing. Yeah. Because we, we were brought up with the iron lady, you know. Mm, mm. <laughs> My mom was a cop. And maybe that is from there. And also I think the way God created women is mm-hmm. different. Yeah. There is, it's like you have a reserve tank. Mm-hmm. I always think you have a reserve tank. Mm-hmm. Even when you feel you're tired, you will come home and you say, I'm tired. But then you someone, still find someone, somewhere will tell you, how much you did watch eh, Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Time. <laughs> yeah. Mm. It's, it's hard, but I think it's doable. Mm. And um, prayer also helps. Yeah. When you feel like uh, you, you're at your last, you feel like you don't have, you, I can't do it. Mm. And also it helps also to have a partner who supports you. Yeah. I'm not saying that those people, because we know best nowadays, the people mm. who don't have, um, yeah. money in their life or yeah. money in their life, but they yeah. still manage. Yeah. So the utmost, I think it's God. It's mm-hmm. just God who helps. Because sometimes I feel like if God, if I didn't believe in God in Yahoo, mm-hmm. I don't know how I would survive. Yeah. The other day I was talking to a friend and saying, "If only you, you know how you tell God, mm-hmm. it's only you. Mm-hmm. If it wasn't for you, it's true. I don't know where it's I would true. be." Yeah. And, and you tell yourself, "Let me just finish at that. I don't mm-hmm. want to go back like, to it." <laughs> To go back yeah. and think about all the things that could have, could have happened, wrong, could what have been, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. So it helps to to have to believe in God because mm-hmm. I think if you don't believe in God, then how do you survive mm-hmm. when you're really at your lowest? Mm-hmm. Who do you go to? Mm-hmm. Because as much as we are all human beings, yeah. I have a husband who's mm-hmm. very supportive. But there are times when you feel like even this husband, yeah. he doesn't understand <laughs> yeah, me, you yeah. know. Then you go back to the person who made you. Exactly. Yeah. Go to exactly. the man who mm. is the one who made you tell him, Hey, mm. you knew it. <laughs> there was this and this, but <laughs> I, I, it's only you. Mm. Yeah, so it helps to have God in your life. Mm. And also, nowadays there's a lot of talk about mental health. Mental yeah. health, mental yeah. health. I think 
African society, we are like, uh, we don't believe in having therapists or mm-hmm. something. But I think in this day and age, if you feel you are at your worst, mm-hmm. you start feeling like, because everything starts with the mind. Yeah. Everything, every action starts from the mind. Yeah. And if you beat it from the mind, mm. yeah, so it will take up all yeah. Yeah. Talk to someone if you have to. Mm. Women, we manage because we talk a lot to our friends. Yes. Yeah, you have that group of friends. Mm. And as you grow older, they become mm. less and less. Mm. Those so you hold on, who are, those. hold on to those mm. ones. They are the ones when you feel, hey, this one is tough, mm. talk to them. Mm. Yeah, just have people you can talk to. And I think having such strong faith comes with, you know, experiences. So has there been something either at work or something that has happened that was like, oh, okay, time to, <laughs> time to, <laughs> time to go back to God, time to like go back to the faith. So has there like been one like, there are a lot, <laughs> but has there been like a specific one from work or something that you would like to, you know? There's a lot. Kind of people. <laughs> No, sometimes I feel like work doesn't really um, doesn't really push me. Mm-hmm. Though there are times when you feel like, hey, if right now someone would just be, I would win some huge amount. Huge lottery, give me one, two me. I'll just, you know, there are days when you feel like that. Yeah. I win this lottery, I will yeah. just drop. I'll just tell them. Yeah. Go and buy. Mm-hmm. And then there are days when you say, even if I win it, mm-hmm. I will take my time. You know. Mm-hmm. So for me, work has its ups and downs. Mm-hmm. That's normal. Mm-hmm. And because work, also you have relationships mm-hmm. at work. Yeah. So it's just what I always try mm-hmm. and has helped me up to this point. Mm-hmm. When you're going to work, the one thing that you can expect is your salary. Yeah. That's it. Mm-hmm. The other things are bonuses. If I get friends at work, mm-hmm. that's a bonus. Mm-hmm. But my priority is I came here to work, do my job, mm-hmm. other things. Yeah. And sometimes it helps not to have those very close friends at work. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm sorry, me personally. Yeah. And every time I I try to do that, mm-hmm. I, it doesn't end well. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so it's important to know, or maybe for me, maybe because as we grew up, mm-hmm. we had to separate our lives. Like we used to have, yeah, yeah. Mm. church, church, mm. home, home, yeah. school, school. So when mm. you are church, mm. forget about the rest. Yeah, do your work, mm. church. Mm. When you finish church, home, mm. forget about the others. Mm. Do. Yeah. When at school, separate whatever issues you had at home. Mm. Mom mm. beat you or whatever. Mm. That's at home. Mm. Now it's school. Concentrate school on that. Yeah. So I think that helped me so much, mm. so that I, I. Divide, as in I don't mix them up. Yeah. Every time I try to mix them up, it does not it go. Does, yeah. It does not go well. Because I mean, it's it's a lot for even a human being it normally is. to handle. Because you you're a mother, you're a mother of two, you know, you're a wife. So it's like so much in between, and also handling someone's else schedule, handling yeah. all this, it's a lot to go into one. So I think separating, you know, it it's helps. yeah, it really helps. Mm-hmm. It helps a lot. Lord. So um, you're also part of like many communities or many church things in a church. So let's go into that. How is that for you? Because you, like you said, you're handling a lot. So did you want to take up all that as well? Or was it just something that out of your passion and something that you want to give back? Yeah, church. <laughs> now, the good thing with church is people like yesterday were being told uh, when you go to church, you think that it's a place where healthy people are. Don't expect healthy people. Mm-hmm. It's a hospital. Mm-hmm. So people have different needs and different issues they're dealing with. Mm-hmm. And church should be a place where you actually rest. Mm-hmm. And resting doesn't mean just sitting. Yeah. So sometimes you you rest in doing a lot of getting involved in so many things. Mm-hmm. I love kids. I love to hang around kids. Mm-hmm. They keep me young. Yeah. <laughs> We've seen that. <laughs> They keep me up. Yeah. So I most of the time you you see me in church, I'm just with them. Yeah. It's just this year, just I took a back seat yeah. because I thought I need to nourish my spiritual life yeah. at church. Also, I need to go to something that is for yeah. me. But 
every time I'm involved in anything to do with kids, mm. it, it's amazing. Yeah. Sometimes you're struggling with your issues. Yeah. Just go to kids and you'll see how yeah. they handle their issues. Mm. Then you start asking yourself, why was why I stressed? On that? <laughs> why was I stressed? Mm. Look at them, you know. Mm. And then they don't keep things in their hearts. Yeah. One minute they're fighting, they say, you're not my friend. The next minute they're hugging. Mm. They forgot about it. Mm. If you could just emulate them. Mm. And me getting involved or being involved in church is mm. it's one it's you feel like it's something that you need to give back yeah and um mm. and me getting involved or being involved in church is mm. it's one it's you feel like it's something that you need to give back yeah and um give back in the sense that God has done so much for us. Exactly. Each exactly. and every day we wake up, yeah. go to work, come mm-hmm. back, mm-hmm. go. It's God. Yeah. So giving back in the sense, you're not giving back to people, but mm-hmm. giving back because mm-hmm. God has blessed you. Mm-hmm. He has given, so I give. Yeah. Yeah. And giving back sometimes think people think it's just monetary. Mm-hmm. It, ma- it doesn't have to be. Mm-hmm. Just give your time. Mm-hmm. Just be there. Be willing to be mm-hmm. used of God. Mm-hmm. Yes. But if you feel you cannot, it's okay also to just uh, even when you when you feel you're overwhelmed, it's okay to say I cannot mm. because first you have to be okay yeah. to be able yes. to give. Yeah. Up. Yeah. You cannot give what you don't have. Yeah. You cannot give love that you don't have. Mm. You have to give what you have. Mm. So if you feel this is it's not for me this time, mm. just tell them. Even when you approach, uh, we need you to do this. Just mm. tell them. I don't feel it's the right time. Yeah. Give me time. Maybe mm. next time I'll mm. be able to take you. It's okay to say no. Mm. Just knowing your life, it's okay to say no. Yeah. Number one is God wants us to be. My ministry first starts at my house. Yeah. You have to be okay with them. Mm. You have to be able to take care of them. Then only you can be able to take care of other people. Imagine me being nasty with my kids. Mm. Then outside there, I'm carrying someone else's kid. My yeah. kids are like, <laughs> mm. <laughs> you know, yeah. I should preach to them first, yeah. then preach to others. Yeah. So if you feel you're not okay to do something, mm. just tell I'm not okay. Don't put a show for other people. Yeah, that's true. Live your life. Mm. Yes. Apart from being in the <laughs> apart from being in the duty free industry, was there anything else you would have gone into in the past or um yeah. No, looking back right now with everything I know, yeah. I don't think I would have done anything differently mm. or I don't think anything would have given me so much mm. um, contentment or, yeah. yeah. Mm. Uh, I came to realize that with all this, I'm more of the back of this. Mm. I like supporting from the back. Mm. How many times have you been, been called up and told, okay, you need to go for this, like mm. the one, the drawing, mm. I tell you. Mm. And you need to be there. Yeah. So I'm not too busy for that. I don't like. Mm. Mm. But when I was growing up and I was younger, I used to think that I would be a doctor because yeah. I used to like that with people. Mm. And I think I would have made a good doctor mm. <laughs> because I like helping yeah. people. I can I don't mind all that gross. Mm. I think I can stand it. Mm. Because even that's another thing. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I can stand all that. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, as I reached high school then the reality hit me that hey, I need to be realistic. Mm. I can't do I can't do all those all years. Those, yeah. <laughs> no, 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 no. Yeah. And then also I mm. used to love biology. Mm. Chemistry. Mm. Physics. Mm-hmm. And looking at being a doctor involves you being oh, good in all this. Mm-hmm. And I think when I was in I, in high school, I I was in one school for two two years. Mm-hmm. Then I had to transfer. Mm-hmm. So when I went to the other school, they were way ahead in physics. Physics mm-hmm. I used to love because I would get it as yeah. long as the teacher is teaching me, mm-hmm. I would understand it. Mm-hmm. But you tell me go and study by mm-hmm. yourself, and I, yeah. so when I went to that school, mm-hmm. they were way ahead. Mm-hmm. So I just decided, okay, this one. No. <laughs> mm. <laughs> For me. Chemistry at some point, I would reach the lab mm. and everything that I had learned, mm. it's like I had it filled out. Out. <laughs> out. Mm. <laughs> I'm blank. Mm. So I decided, okay. Doctor, <laughs> let it, let's leave it for other people. Mm. So then my mom told me, Ah, you, you'll be an engineer. Me, engineer, <laughs> doing what? Mm. <laughs> 
At some point you say, no, no, now teacher. Eh? Oh, maybe I would have made a good teacher. Yeah, yeah. Maybe. It's also with kids helping. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I love kids. And some people tell me, oh, are you a teacher by profession? Say, no, mm-hmm. never. Mm-hmm. So maybe looking at it, maybe even if I wasn't teaching, yeah. maybe I would get that satisfaction that mm-hmm. I get now. Yeah, I think maybe if yeah. I wasn't doing what I was doing, maybe I would be a teacher. teacher. Mm. But teacher specifically for younger kids. Mm. Yes. Just the younger kids. <laughs> <laughs> I start answering mm. back and I say, oh, nice. <laughs> yeah. yeah, maybe. Mm. Maybe they, maybe that I will go into teaching. But what I do now, I love. Mm. Yes. So, um, for anyone who's out there and wants to go into the retail or into the duty free or even into being a mother here in Dubai, how would you give advice into all that now that you know your journey, now that you know where you are now here in Dubai? By the way, I didn't start at Dubai, I just ended Mm -hmm. up there. Mm -hmm. (laughs) When, okay, back home, Mm -hmm. my first job, very first job, Mm -hmm. believe it or not, I used to work as as a Casual labor mm-hmm. at Colgate Palm <laughs> yeah. and that's when I met my husband. Mm-hmm. So that's why I had to go there. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you just go there because you know, yeah, it's coming. No, I didn't know. <laughs> the first time I, I saw him, I got pissed. I was wondering what, why is this guy so loud? <laughs> mm-hmm. Must he be that loud? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So now I don't. Know. Yeah. So you used to it. <laughs> no, he's not loud. Mm-hmm. I tamed him. Yeah. <laughs> no lie. <laughs> No, I actually met him there. I think mm. if I didn't go to Colgate, maybe we wouldn't have met. We were mm. two different people. Yeah. I lived in the west part of Nairobi. Mm-hmm. He lived in the eastern part of Nairobi. Mm-hmm. So without this, I, there's no way. Mm-hmm. Because me, I used to go only church, mm-hmm. home. That's it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Then, um, then I, that was my first job. Mm-hmm. Then I got a job at a clinic, mm-hmm. Y2K. I thank God because that opportunity opened up mm. i was at receptionist mm. and it was amazing it used to be busy but i learned a lot from there mm-hmm. actually the system we're using there is what i came to dubai and mm-hmm. found the so hospital it's like you know and yes. Kind of, yes. Yeah. so i came to dubai mm-hmm. in 2008 yeah. i got a job again as a receptionist at a hospital mm-hmm. nmc specialty mm-hmm. in uh what says mm-hmm. yeah I learned a lot from that show. Mm. It was a lot. That mm. was, it stretched me beyond what mm. I thought I could handle. Mm. Uh, yeah. I, you know, and then coming to Dubai, working with different cultures, different nationalities. Yeah. It, it strikes you. It like, it's yes, <laughs> yes. I think working in Kenya, mm. you, you know, you used, used to, yeah. used to uh, even if it's someone new, you're like, okay, uh, I yeah, know this is a Kenya. Yeah. It's not, but when mm. you come here, there's a lot of changes. There's a lot of different cultures. Yeah. People are different. Yeah. Language. Mm. I guess the one thing that really hit me when I came to Dubai, uh, in my family, I'm considered the shortest. Mm. And used to, people used to make fun of me mm. when kids are growing. They will grow and I say, ah, so now you're reaching. Uh, <laughs> yeah, the, I yeah. used to be like a, 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 a ruler for them to measure themselves with. Mm. Oh, now you're on our shoulders. Oh, oh, okay. Mm. So people used to make fun of yeah. me in the ha- family. So when I came to Dubai in the airport, I see all short, short mm. people. I'm the tallest. Mm. I'm like, oh, this is nice. <laughs> yeah, rich, yeah. Yeah. This is nice. Mm. So there are shorter people than me, yeah. you know. But um, anyone coming into Dubai, I think this is a different time from back then. Mm-hmm. Um, it's they are dealing with so much, diff- so many different things. Mm-hmm. As when we came to Dubai, we didn't have metro. Mm-hmm. We used to use buses, mm-hmm. and you stand at the stop waiting for a bus. Mm-hmm. Sometimes you think it's supposed to come in at twelve. You're there at twelve in this summer. Mm-hmm. It comes forty-five minutes later. Mm-hmm. By the time you are going for your interview, you're dripping. Dream. So you yeah, have to go. Dream. You have to carry it, change of clothes. Mm-hmm. You go in fast. You go somewhere to the mm-hmm. toilet. Mm-hmm. Clean change. Up, mm-hmm. change mm-hmm. You know. Now it's different, but they're dealing with different things from yes. us. Yeah. The job market is different. Yeah. So before someone comes, I think you have to really talk to someone who is here, and mm-hmm. so that they can advise you. Mm-hmm. Uh, because it's not like before. Before we could just come. You know. Ah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, okay. you mm-hmm. come and you mm-hmm. go into the hotel start. that's where we start mm-hmm. everyone starts there then you 
you start looking yeah. where you can grow. Mm -hmm. But um, one thing is they need to talk to someone who's here mm -hmm. to be able, someone that you can trust. Of mm -hmm. course, don't just talk to anyone because yeah. there's some people they will talk to you and give you false hope. Well, yeah, exactly. You reach here and yeah. it's different. Yeah. Talk to someone you can trust, who can be able to advise you. Mm -hmm. And some people also get some job offers that actually think. Yeah. So before you come, no do a bit of research, talk to someone who is here, mm. they'll be able to help you. Mm. And here if you get someone who can who can at least help you with accommodation. Yeah. Because accommodation is one thing that really stra people struggle with. Mm. Yeah, just talk to someone before you come. Yeah. And please, if your daughter wants to come here and they are below two in before mm. I would advise. Yeah. Yeah, it's not something that oh, if I had a daughter in Kenya, mm. knowing what I know I wouldn't advise someone to let their daughter come here to struggle mm. here. Mm. To look for a job. Mm. Unless, I don't know, they're coming they're from really there and they have yeah. a job and they're yeah. going straight into the job. But it's really tough mm. on ladies here. Yeah. It's really tough. It's a tough world. Mm. Yes. Especially now. It's Especially really now. Especially on the jobs. Yeah. Yes. There's, mm. there's a lot of demand. Mm. And there's a lot of demand and supply is short. Mm. Or, or the demand, the supply, employers are taking yeah. advantage of people. Yeah. The offers we used to get back then, mm. you can't get it now. Yeah. You know? So just, or it's very, you, it's very difficult for mm -hmm. people looking for jobs right now. Mm -hmm. So don't just go because people are going to the bar. Yeah. yeah. It might not be the best, the best um, option for you. Yeah, exactly. Look at other places mm -hmm. probably. Mm -hmm. But speak to people before because yeah. even after Corona a lot of things have changed. Yeah, yeah that's true. Yeah. But all in all, wherever you are, you mm -hmm. can make it. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter. You can make it. Mm -hmm. Yes. Believe in God. And I think that's it. I think we're going to end it from here. Mm -hmm. Um thank you for letting us come to your home and um interview you <laughs> and get some advice on you. Welcome. But not to interview me next time. Say hi. <laughs> Just to come and like say, and say hi. hi. Yes. <laughs> so make sure you like, share, and subscribe. <laughs> Thank you for watching. Thank you.